Hello everyone, this is uh, BK2421, uh, and this is my first opinion slash react video. Um, been try I want to start putting on more content on my YouTube channel, so I figured uh, this would be an easy way to start doing that, is then talk about something that, you know, I can talk about a lot. So, um, I'm here today to talk about the uh, 2014 Buffalo Bill season. Uh, as you can see, and had, as you probably have known throughout the years of me putting up guitar covers and stuff like that, you've seen you know stuff on my walls in my room. I'm a huge Bills fan. And unfortunately, yesterday, the Buffalo Bills let us all down yet again and uh, lost to the 2-12 and Oakland Raiders. So I'm um, here to give my reactions to that as well as the, you know, the season in general and what's to come. Uh, so, I mean, th there really isn't much to talk about what happened yesterday. That, that was just classic Buffalo Bills trap game. You know, we, we beat the Packers at home in a great, you know, a, a, in a legitimate win. You know, all around we played, uh, we played great defense. Our offense did just enough to win, even though, I, you know, you wish they would have not, they, you wish they weren't so inept. It's the worst thing to watch in the world. Um, and then, you know, we... Just lack of discipline. We're never, we weren't ready mentally, and we came out just playing flat. And I don't understand how that happens. But you know, whatever. What, what are you gonna do? We kind of get used to it after 15 straight years of no playoffs. So, um, but in general, even though we lost yesterday and very disappointing, um, this year, in my opinion, was was successful for the most part. Uh, it, I believe, we've established that we are. We're not, you know, while yesterday wasn't any help, you know, we're not the laughing stock of the NFL anymore. You know, we we are we can be we can play with the best of them. We we only lost to set to Denver by seven. We beat Green Bay. Uh, we took we took Green Bay in, or uh, New England into the fourth quarter where we played them, and we're going to play them again this week. Um, you know, so it, we're on the rise, and that's you know that's at least something positive, and it was great for. You know, me as a Bills fan, you know, we got to watch some actual meaningful games in December for the first time in 10 years. So that, that's all I could hope for, you know. So um, moving forward, uh, the Bills, in my opinion, uh, this game we've got coming up against New England uh, should decide uh, Doug Marone's future as the coach of the Buffalo Bills. Um, a lot of people will question why do you think, you know, if, if this is a successful season, why should his job be on the line? Well, if you look at it, the reason that the that you know we're eight and seven and we're not winning is because of the offense. And Doug Marone is an offensive-minded coach. Why, if you're an offensive-minded coach, we should not be this horrible on offense, especially since he is an offensive lineman coach. He, you know, he was an offensive lineman, and he, we have the worst offensive line in the. In, in the league. It's awful. It's hilarious how bad our offensive line is. And so to me is if you can't get your guys mentally tough enough to be to like, we have to take care of business against this two and 12 team. And then we go and face our, you know, the top, the class of the AFC. You don't look past this game. Like you, you had to win three straight games and you're going to discount the second one just because you did good in the first one. No, you've got he didn't. He. I don't feel he ever really mentally prepared our players very well, um, and to me, that's just that's not good. You know, if you're an offensive lineman coach and we have the worst offensive lineman in the NFL, how that that's not a good reflection of you. The only reason our you know our defense is great because we went out and got great defensive players when we have a great defensive coordinator in Jim Schwartz. So to me, you know, now that we've lost, we have nothing to play for except our pride. You know, and getting over 500 for the first time since 2004, that, that shows, like, if you, you need to win this game in New England, Doug Marone. You need to, in my opinion. Because, you know, with new ownership, with Terry Pagula, he's not going to take this bullshit. He's going to look at, I, I believe he's going to look at this team and go, what's the one thing holding this team back? Clearly it's offense. You know, what, how, how are you, how are you, how are you going to defend yourself when you can't, when you score the way you do? You constantly kick field goals like, you have a red zone target in Mike Williams and you keep him inactive every, like, just put him in the red zone. You don't have to have him play every down, but the dude is 6'4". Throw the ball, have Orton or whoever throw the ball up to him. You know, it, I don't understand why we don't, why we never tried to do that. We There was a lot of, 
the, the offensive play calling this year was ve very, very just ugh, at times. You know, I will give you know credit. There are some there were some games that I thought they did the right calls, they did the right things, and it was just poor execution. Most that game in particular would be the Kansas City game. That game had no fault on the coaches at all. That was all pretty much on Bryce Brown. Um, but yeah, so if they can't win in New England, that would make Doug Rohn own four against the team that we need to beat to get somewhere in the AFC. You know, that you have the team that can do it, period, end of sentence. In my opinion, there should be no reason that this team can't make the playoffs and actually do decently. Like, it's all mental discipline at this point, and that falls on coaching. So that that's my personal opinion. I think T uh, Terry Pagula will come in and uh, evaluate the play and be like, this is the weakness of the team. I've got to get rid of the weakness. So if you win this game against the Patriots, which would – probably effectively put them in the second seed instead of the first, which would hurt them. So they are obviously playing for something, and we've never beaten them in Gillette Stadium. So if you manage to go out there and win this game, then you would deserve your job. But if you can't, this is what we need to do. Ch uh, Chan Gailey beat the, ta uh, beat the Patriots in his second season. Why can't you? Period. And you have a way better defense than he did. And you have way better offensive players than he did, too. And his offense was a lot better than yours. So, in my personal opinion, honestly, I believe that, you know, if we brought Chan Gailey back as our offensive coordinator, not coach, because no, um, he could do work. If he put the spread system, he knew how to use C.J. Spiller. And if he was getting, you know, great, you know, plays from, you know, plays from receivers like Donald Jones, David Nelson, and Stevie Johnson, imagine what he could do with uh, Sammy Watkins, Robert Woods, Mike Williams, you know, and then he would still have Fred Jackson and C.J. Spiller, Scott Chandler, uh, Marquise Goodwin, Chris Hogan. He could do a lot of stuff in that spread offense, but no, we're trying to run out the gut on first and down with C.J. First down and ten with C.J. Spiller for two yards every time. Best best playing. There we go. Okay, so moving forward. Um, with what what the Bills are going to, you know, this will be our first offseason under Terry Pagula. So I'm pretty excited to see what he's going to do. And in my opinion, all we need to do is shore up the offensive line, which I don't know why we should have to do that. Now, you know, Doug Marone being an offensive line coach. Uh, get that. Um, I honestly think we're going to get rid of C.J. Spiller. I don't see him returning. Uh, he... You know, while he has great uh, big play potential, he's injury prone, and let's face it, he's very inconsistent. He, you know, he, he'll bust out one big play, but when you watch these games, he just he runs east and west. He doesn't, you know, he doesn't really follow the blockers, and then, I mean, not to his to CJ's defense, we are not using him the way he should be used. We don't get him in space the way we should. I don't understand why we don't put him in the slot. Get him, you know, put people in motion and try. There's just a lot of stuff with this offense that is just very infuriating. So I don't think he's going to want to be back because he, he's wasting his career here. He could be doing better somewhere else. I guarantee if he goes to, like, Chip Kelly's offense with the Eagles or something, he will be everywhere. Um, so I don't think CJ is going to be back, which means we're going to have to draft a running back probably, which in in reality isn't the worst thing in the world. Uh, if, we sh if we get some nice free agent guards... Uh, we can use our th uh, third round pick on a running back. I mean, uh, you look at it, which we call running backs weren't taken until midway through the second la the second round last year, and they and people got running backs like Jeremy Hill. Uh, who else was there? We got uh, you know we got Carlos Hyde went in the second round, and uh, no, that's not it's not a good example. There and Trey Mason. You know, those are three decent, you know, rookie running backs that came out this year, and they were all drafted mid, late, second round or later. So we can draft a running back in there. Um, what we really need is what will really make this offense a lot better is if we make if we get a playmaking tight end. You know, somebody, you know, I'm not expecting a Gronk or a Jimmy Graham, but somebody, you know, serviceable and consistent, like a Heath Miller or an Antonio Gates or something like that. If we get one of those... That'll instantly help our red zone. It'll give whoever our quarterback is a safety blanket. It'll make our offense a lot better. So that's what I think we need to. That's those are those are those three positions right there. If we just upgrade all of those, 
well, in, you know, the offensive line immediately will make an impact because that'll give EJ Manuel or Kyle Orton more time to deal, you know, to to look at the defense and make plays and give our, our receivers and whatnot more time to get open. So right there, that'll make our offense better. Um, and then, you know, give a running back bigger holes, a tight end safety blanket, you know. We're all, in my opinion, we're only three pieces away from really, really making a difference. Um, we have to... We have a few players that are going to the, uh, they're going to be free agents. Uh, we definitely, we definitely need to sign Jerry Hughes. Um, if we don't, which would be understandable because his price tag is probably going to be high. Um, I don't think, in my personal opinion, I don't think Jerry Hughes is going to do as successful with other people, with other teams as he is with us. So, he may come with a price tag, but who? if he goes to another team, I don't think he's going to be... Because if you're on the same defensive line as Mario Williams, Kyle Williams, and Marcel Darius, obviously that you're going to get your chances just to be one-on-one. -on -one. And while he has been winning his position battles against left tackles, which was, has been very stellar this year, he, you still your play is still going to be benefited a lot from playing on the same line as those guys. So I hope he recognizes that and, you know, he stays here. But if not, we're going to have to obviously replace him with somebody that, you know, can do the job. But I think I think we could definitely find it. We'll probably, knowing the Bills, we'll probably get one of those uh, low-cost, serviceable veterans. Um, Brandon Spikes, he, he'll be going there. I, I hope we keep him, but I don't think we will. Uh, Denoris Searcy, he makes plays every so often. I hope we get back, him back. Marcus Easley would be a great, we need to keep him. He's a great special teamer, you know. Um, I'm sure that's not what he intended to do through a, throughout his NFL career, but the dude makes plays. Um, Chris Hogan, 7-Eleven, that's the best nickname in the NFL. I do not care. 7-Eleven, uh, because he's always open. Um, it's awesome. I... Uh, I'm looking at this list, I'm not really seeing anybody else. I've already talked about CJ Spiller. Um, we got. I think we should try and see if Mario Williams would be will, willing to restructure his contract so we can get more players. Because you know he, you know he came here, got a lot of money, but at the same, I, I can tell he really likes the environment here in Buffalo. You know, especially after uh, shoveling out Jim Kelly's driveway during that blizzard. Um, I think he really enjoys Buffalo, and you know he recog I'm sure he wants to win. He wants to get to the playoffs and make it, you know, play some playoff football. So if he restructures the contract a little bit and gives gives us some more cap room, you know, that'll really help us. So Mario, if this video magically appears in front of your computer screen, which I'm about 150% sure it won't, help us out, man. Come on, you know, we love you. We'll love you even more. <laughs> um, so that's what that's that that I've got. That um, I don't really have anything. And in my opinion, um, a lot of people really uh, were there. They didn't like the Sammy Watkins, what we did to get Sammy Watkins. And I, I love Sammy. I love that guy to death. I, he's a great, he's going to be the next Larry Fitzgerald, even though Larry Fitzgerald's still in the league. But, you know, unless we get this guy, you know, somebody to, somebody that can really get the ball to this guy, he's got to, he's going to be limited throughout most of, his, most of his career. He's got a great head on his shoulders, very humble, very intelligent. Um, I think he, he, I can't wait to watch the rest of this guy's career. But a lot of people said, oh, you don't trade up to get a wide receiver. And, I, you know, I understand the move. And he, I think people are overvaluing it too much. You know, the first round pick, we're, we weren't going to get a quarterback in the next in this draft anyway. So you could, um, Mariota is going to go top five probably. Um, if he doesn't, then that just means that his stock is going to slide with the NFL, with the combine and all of that. Um and then Jameis Winston, nah. We don't really. Another Florida State quarterback? I don't think so. Um, let's see. So, you know, giving up a, a first rounder for a wide receiver, yeah, it seems kind of dumb. But at the same time, you know what? We played this whole season without Kiko Alonso, and he is definitely worth a first round pick. So we're getting him back. And if you had him on this defense this year, Oh my God, that man would have been up and down the field making plays. He, he would have had a field day. So if we can maintain this defense for the most part, we're obviously going to lose some you know parts here and there um, and get some new people in there, but we're getting Kiko Alonso back. So to me, that is our first-round draft pick this year. I'll take him. 
who wouldn't take Eco Alonso? Um, as far as our quarterback situation, uh, I was calling for Orton in the beginning of the year. Uh, I stand by that decision. I believe it was the right one. Um, you know, while we didn't make the playoffs, you know, it's Kyle Orton. Come on. You can't really expect that much from the guy. Um, but I do believe in this last game against the Patriots, I fully believe that Marone should start EJ Manuel. There's really no reason not to, you know, see, see what the guy can do. See, you know, see if he's learned. See if he's grown, matured. He's more willing to take shots down the field. Uh, I think you know this is this is the Bills Super Bowl. You know we you know we're done with the season, and we've got the last game against the Patriots, the class of the AFC. So the class of the AFC East for the past fifteen goddamn years. So let's take you know take a shot with EJ. See what he can do. He almost beat him in his first game ever. Why not try and have him win this one? Doug Marone, in my opinion, your job should be on the line, so I think you should take this. I think you should definitely start EJ. Um, and then come next year, have bring in, uh, probably draft a quarterback in the third round, third, four, third, fourth round, and then have those three guys battle out, because I definitely do not want Jay Cutler. The, the, only reason, the only way I want Jay Cutler in Buffalo is if he comes with a first-round pick, which is possible, actually, for, because he's so overpriced, but no, I don't want Jay Cutler. Uh, RG3, he's n he's never going to be the same RG3, and that's not his fault, and I feel bad for him, but he's never he's never going to be the same RG3 as he was in his rookie year. Um, and there really isn't any anybody else other than that is just, we're just going for mediocre. You got it. You want to try and find somebody that's going to be here for the next 10 years. He doesn't have to be the, you know, Peyton Manning, Tom Brady, Aaron Rodgers, etc. He doesn't have to be that good, but, you know, if we could get a quarterback that is solid... And, you know, you know, Russell Wilson, Ben Roethlis, you know, somebody that just does their job will be fine. That's all we need is somebody that just does their job at the quarterback position, and we will be fine. Um, that's all I really have to talk about. Uh, if you have any comments, uh, opinions that you'd like to leave, you know, comment, and we can talk. Um, subscribe. To, I'd really like it if you subscribed. I'll be posting more videos, um, not necessarily only about the Bills, obviously, especially since the season's over, so... I don't really need to post any videos like this, but I will be posting more stuff about music and all sorts of other uh, stuff, and, and obviously more guitar covers and all sorts of stuff. Um, yeah, I think that's it. So, go Bills.